Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, we'll begin. And uh, what we have done is uh, in the last class, uh, we had uh, seen how we can check the stability of the uh, retaining wall. Okay, so we have checked it for uh, three stability considerations. One was overturning, and uh, other was a uh, base pressure, and also the sliding resistance to sliding uh, so we are to check it and ensure that this is safe the entire wall will uh, remain safe for these stability considerations okay so let us just uh, see uh, this uh, okay so this was the calculation for stability uh, we have taken uh, the weight components of this uh, retaining wall. So we have taken the backfill weight, we have considered that, okay? And the uh, weight of the entire retaining wall will be there. In that you have uh, the components of a uh, stem, uh, toe slab and the heel slab, okay? So these will uh, be the weights what will be uh, coming across. Now the weight components, they'll try to stabilize the overturning of the retaining wall about this point O. Whereas the horizontal force will try to overturn the retaining wall about this point O. So you have to can first calculate what is the moment that is developing due to the uh, weight components about this point O. So for that we have used this table and we have determined what is the moment of all these weight components about the point O here, okay? So when I add up all these movements after calculating, if I add up all these movements, that will be the restoring movement, what we'll be getting here, okay? So now taking the ratio of this restoring movement and overturning movement, we need to check the uh, factor of safety, okay? Why this point nine is taken is because of uh, the dead weights. All these restoring movements are arising because of dead weight. Soil is dead weight in this backfill soil and also the self weights of stem and the base slab are dead weights. When the restoring movement is coming due to dead weight of the structure, then it should be considered 90%, only 90% of it has to be considered over there, okay? So that's why this restoring movement is multiplied by 0.9. So that divided by this overturning movement, that should come out to be more than 1.4. That is from clause 20.1 of IS 456-2000. Okay. So in our case, it is coming out as 2.45, which is more than 1.4. So it is safe against what? Against overturning. Okay. Stability against overturning is satisfied. It is stable. Now, after this, one more is for the base pressure. Okay. So we have checked that base pressure here. So this is the base pressure distribution. So for finding the base pressure, you need to find out eccentricity of the load. Whatever is these W1, W2, W3 uh, were there, the vertically downward forces. So they act at certain point. Their resultant will be acting at certain point. Okay. So I want to know what is the eccentricity of that uh, load. Okay. So the resultant, what we get due to W1, W2, W3, which are the weight components of backfill stem and the uh, heel slab. So due to that, what is the uh, resultant of these three weights and where it is acting with respect to point O that has to be determined. We already have this resultant uh, magnitude W. When you add these, all the components, okay? Weight of backfill plus weight of the stem slab 
and weight of the field slab which are acting in vertically downward direction when i add them together it will give me the resultant force in vertical direction okay i have just determined the intersection with the base x intercept of that resultant okay or this comes out to be 1.17 meters from point o from here 1.17 meters okay so where should be the eccentricity eccentricity is measured with respect to the centroid of this base slab okay so this base slab where is the centroid exactly at half the length of this base slab okay p by 2 so what is the eccentricity between the resultant okay and the centroid of the base slab so it will be b by 2 minus this x bar what we got was 0.33 meters okay and also we check this b by 6 whether this value of eccentricity it is less than b by 6 or more than b by 6 okay so this will immediately tell me whether there will be any negative base pressure distribution if it is less than b by 6 then no worry it will be having a positive base pressure distribution throughout in case if this is more than b by 6 then we can come across negative soil pressure distribution so we will have to redetermine this width of the base base slab okay in k so that it will be less than b by 6 okay so here it is fine okay we will also check it when we calculate the minimum and maximum base pressure there also we will come to know whether negative distribution of base pressure is arising okay so how do you calculate the base pressure distribution is from this okay q which is given by w upon b into 1 plus or minus 6c e by b okay when i want the maximum base pressure i'll be taking the summation w by b into 1 plus 6c e by b when it is a minimum base pressure distribution to be determined it will be summation w by b into 1 minus 6c e by b okay so with those two substitutions these are the two values what we get for the base pressure distribution the maximum base pressure is 121.5 kN per meter square and it is less than our sbc value okay so it is safe and the minimum base pressure distribution is 24.72 kN per meter square and this is coming out to be positive so there is no uplift of the base slab over here it is not losing any contact with the soil so fine we don't have to worry about that now okay so that completes one more uh stability check that is the distribution of base pressure okay and other than this what one more stability failure may occur is the sliding okay so the retaining wall may be pushed away from the uh, back wall due to the horizontal earth pressure so that should not happen for that there is a force which is arising at the bottom of this base slab a frictional force will be developed since this base slab is resting on the soil there will be a friction that will be occurring between the soil and the uh, this surface of the base slab base slab okay so how much is that frictional force we can determine if we know the coefficient of friction between soil and concrete okay what is the interface here it is it is between soil and concrete okay so beneath this the material is soil it is resting on soil and this base slab is made of concrete so if i know what is the coefficient of uh, friction between concrete and soil that uh, the frictional force what is developed here can be easily determined so it is what it was given for us that coefficient of friction is 0.5 between concrete and soil okay so this 0.5 multiplied by the normal force for this surface which is nothing but summation w okay resultant vertical downward force summation w so if i multiply this coefficient with that summation w i'll get the frictional force which is here 109.7 kN okay and this is our force which is pushing the wall okay it is because of this force the wall will slide so we have to check the factor of safety between these two these two forces okay so again 0.9 into this frictional force divided by the sliding force pa that should come out to be more than 1.4 okay so if i take 0.9 times this 109.7 and divide it by 84.27 what it gives me is 1.17 so it is failing okay it is not safe in sliding so it has to be more than 1.4 in order to achieve a factor of safety more than 1.4 what 
we have alternative we have is we can provide a share key in this form a projection of concrete beneath this base slab can be provided and this will develop a passive earth pressure there will be a passive earth pressure which will be developed in front of this share key once i provide this share key this is what the passive earth pressure will be developed over here in front of the retaining wall so this will help us in preventing the sliding of the retaining wall okay we have now introducing another force which is opposing the sliding force here this uh, one of the force was this friction another force is this passive earth pressure so on putting this shear key if i want to know what is the pressure that is uh, developed over here what is the, what, what is the passive resultant passive earth pressure which is acting on the shear key this is how we calculate that okay this is again the earth pressure theory on that basis we have done the calculation so half kp into gamma into h2 minus h2 square minus h1 square will give me what is the passive earth pressure h1 r h and h2 are the depths over here h1 is the depth up to the base of this uh, base lab okay or up to the bottom of the base lab neglecting the uh, top 30 centimeter or 0.3 meter soil which is loose soil which has no effect on this soil pressure distribution so we have neglected that so this is this h1 in our case what it comes out 1.3 was the depth of foundation minus 0.3 top loose soil so 1 meter h1 is 1 meter h2 from here up to the bottom of this passive earth pressure distribution okay so 1 meter what i get here h1 1 meter plus the depth of the shear key plus this distribution of the soil pressure which is at an angle of angle of repose which acts at an angle of repose over here okay with the horizontal so what i get 1 plus 0.3 the depth of shear key plus whatever is the projection of the slab beyond the shear key into tan phi into tan of this angle of repose so one meter was the projection of toe slab because the shear key what i have provided is exactly below this stem okay it is exactly at the same point where the stem is okay on the toe slab so this projection comes out to be one meter what we have calculated earlier so that one into for 30 degrees which is angle of repose it will tell me what is this h2 okay so this is what the passive earth pressure will be now 68.12 kilo newtons now after checking what is the factor of safety so what will happen due to the red weight it will be 0.9 times this mu into w okay 0.9 times the frictional force because frictional force is developed because of that dead weight which is acting over there plus the passive earth pressure okay this pp is 68.12 divided by horizontal earth pressure active earth pressure 84.27 now if i try calculating factor of safety it is coming out as 1.97 over here which is more than 1.0 so now it is safe okay this is how we increase that uh, factor of safety by providing the shear key okay so that is a stability requirement what we have to do check it once that stability is done okay we have checked or proportion the retaining wall okay initially after that we have done the stability checks then we will come to the reinforced concrete design of retaining wall we have to design the reinforcement in that uh, retaining wall what is the reinforcement to be provided in toe slab what reinforcement has to be provided in heel slab and what is the reinforcement in the uh, stem okay so there we have to decide that reinforcement what should be the bars what is the ast what bars and what will be the spacing of those bars have to be decided okay so we'll begin with this design of base lab okay so this is actual uh, rc design what will start now any difficulty for that uh, stability check or proportioning part of the retaining wall okay so coming to the first design that is a design of a base lab so what i have here in this case 
Now what we'll do is we'll take all the forces that will act over here on the base lab. I've shown the forces which are acting on the base lab. Okay. So before that, let me uh, put one more thing over here. So that is how this uh, retaining wall will behave now. Since we are trying to design it, I should know what is the behavior, how is the behavior of this retaining wall. Then only I can provide the uh, reinforcement in proper position. Okay. So what happens is there is a lateral earth pressure which is acting over here. Okay. So that is a force which is uh, there. And other than that, on the base lab, what we have is the pressures, okay, pressure distribution. So first is this is one force or pressure okay and because of this force what we have is please mute yourself pritam sitar and uh, vishal vanarli keep yourself muted so due to this what happens this will bend like a cantilever that was one thing what we have observed in cantilever type of retaining wall so here what will happen is this is the bending nature of the uh, stem part okay so this is how it is going to bend over here so tension will arise on this face on the face which is on the backfill side of the retaining wall that will be experiencing the tension over here okay uh, whereas the front face will be under compression so we require the main reinforcement to be provided on the back side of the retaining wall on the backfill face of the retaining on of the stem over here okay so this is the bending nature of the stem okay now what will happen in the uh, heel slab uh, normally this backfill portion it will uh, increase the pressure in downward direction so this will try to bend in a hogging manner okay something in this manner so this is how the heel slab will be bending okay so this is a bent uh, this one deflected shape of the heel slab so here this is the tension where you find the tension being developed okay so on the top uh, side we require the reinforcement the main reinforcement to be provided over here okay and the toe slab if you observe the toe slab Okay, when there is no uh, backfill present, we will not consider any backfill to be present on the toe slab. If even small amount of backfill may come later. Here, what will happen? The net force will be acting in upward direction. So this is how a toe slab portion will bend over here. Okay, so you have the tension being developed on the bottom side. So these are the uh, uh, locations where reinforcement is required. Wherever the cracks or tension is coming over there. So there you have to provide the reinforcement, tension reinforcement, EST, okay? So this bending nature is required for us to decide where our main reinforcement will come. Okay, is that clear? So now we can design the reinforcement and also provide that reinforcement. I have not shown the share key here for simplicity in the design part. Uh, share key, we have done it. We have finished with that one. It uh, just was, it was meant for uh, having a, a developing the passive earth pressure, which uh, we have checked for that uh, sliding uh, resistance. So it is fine now. We don't have to worry about that share key anymore. Other than uh, that, uh, are, is that clear what uh, was here? The bending nature of this retaining wall. Right, so now, uh, first what we'll do is we'll uh, take up the design of base lab, okay? Again, in base lab, we have two portions. One is toe slab and another is a heel slab. Why? Because the nature of bending of toe slab and heel slab are different. Heel slab is bending in a hogging manner. Tension is on the top side. Whereas toe slab is bending in a sagging manner, tension is on the bottom face. So 
the location of the reinforcement is different and also the uh, pressure distribution will vary okay so what is shown here is what is the pressure that is coming on the heel slab okay how do you find this pressure is whatever the density of backfill is here okay the density of backfill multiplied by this uh, height of the backfill okay multiplied by that height so that will tell me what is the pressure distribution on this uh, backfill so that is the pressure distribution what you come across here and this pressure distribution we have already got it q max and q minimum 121.5 and 24.72 kiloton per meter square so that is the pressure distribution on the bottom piece of the uh, base slab okay now what you have to do is we have to consider the pressure distribution up to the base of the stem okay when i am designing the closed slab what i'll do is i'll consider only up to here the pressure distribution so i need what is the intensity of pressure at this junction of closed slab and the stem at this point okay so when i interpolate and find it out it is coming 56.98 kilonewton per meter square 56.98 kilonewton per meter square okay so due to this what is the bending moment that is coming in this closed slab and what is the shear force to which it is subjected okay so that we will calculate then we will go for the design okay so for that first is this bending moment now what we do is for designing we will consider 1 meter length of the retaining wall i will consider 1 meter length of the retaining wall so this eventually just turns out to be 121.5 kilonewton per meter and 24.72 kilonewton per meter all these pressures which are in kilonewton per meter square when i take 1 meter length of retaining wall i'll be multiplying that 1 meter length so this will result in just load intensity of kilonewton per meter okay now for finding the bending moment so here this 24 will be constant here later if the, you find out what is the uh, pressure at this point or interpolate that you will get this intensity and what i can consider is this is a uniformly varying load okay with the minimum intensity at one end and maximum intensity at the other end okay so i'll be splitting up this into two part one is a udl of 56.98 kiloton per meter okay a udl constant udl of 56.98 kiloton per meter okay so that part plus what we have the remaining portion which is this 121.5 minus 56.98 this part okay so that will be our in, uh, udl and this uniformly varying load so i have divided it like that and then the bending moment and the shear force have been calculated okay so due to this udl of 56.98 it will be 56.98 into this is the length l square w l square by 2 56.98 into 1 square by 2 okay that is because of udl plus due to this uniformly varying load okay what is the intensity over here here it is zero here 121.5 minus 56.9 so half base 1 meter into 121.5 minus 56.98 okay that is the udl over here what we have okay so this is the bending moment what will come here due to udl plus due to uvl okay this total uvl multiplied by the point where it is being applied from this end i want the bending moment to be calculated at this phase so from this end it will be two-thirds of this height of uh, length of the triangle okay two-thirds of this base of the triangle so two-thirds of one meter right so what you get the bending moment that will be acting at the face of the stem so in the toe slab will be 50 kiloton meter uh, just check this calculation do it i want you to do this and check it this bending moment because this will be the design part so we need to check and go ahead just check that calculation take these intensities try finding these intensities interpolation whether it is fine 56.98 and tell me whether they are correct
take your calculators, do the calculation, check them. Q max, Q minimum, we have done that calculation. What you have to do is you have to interpolate this value one that is first. Try interpolating and see whether you'll get this one or not. Okay. And what is the bending moment due to this portion of the base pressure in the toe slab? What is the bending moment in the toe slab? Do you get this value? What is shown over here? Verify that one. I want some answers. Unmute yourself and uh, tell me what will be that intensity. Vaibhav Kanekar. Yes, sir. Uh, what is your answer for this uh, pressure intensity sir, do you, over here? Doing, doing sir. Uday Patil. Yes, sir. Mm, what you got? What calculation you are doing?
Yeah, tell me if you have any answers. Anyone? Interpolating this pressure she is a two minute job. Do you people keep it muted or you are not there? It is better you can leave. You have to work, work on these problems. Uh, explain once again. Which one, which part you tell me? First part, sir, interpolating. Interpolation? Interpolation, you take this intensity, it is uh, <laughs> not part of first, this one, okay? In this triangle, I have to find the height of this triangle, similar triangle. The pressure distribution, we have got it. I want, see, this is what the, I have. I want this height of the triangle. It will tell me what is the pressure distribution over here, interpolation. That is the interpolation part. So 121. I have not done any interpolation. I have told you to do that part. 121.5 minus 24.72 divided by 3. Into sir, 53.6, sir. 53.6. You are getting 50. No, sir, 55. 55, sir. 55. Close to this one. Okay. Not much difference. Yes, sir. Okay. Then fine. Uh, I'll go ahead with the calculation of bending moment then. Taking this uh, part. Okay, uh, try to find the bending moment. Okay, proceed with the calculation of bending moment. Yeah, so I want this. This is what interpolation is. This height, if you determine that plus 24.72 is your intensity over here. There's nothing to explain in that. Can you find this height? This height is 121.5 minus 24 over here. I hope you are getting that. Those have got that uh, close value, if not uh, much difference is there, then uh, uh, you go with uh, finding out the bending moment. For getting this value, Please check what you'll get in that. It should come out to eighty nine point two four. This is 89.24. Okay, 89.24 kiloton per meter square. Then this should be 89.24. 
and this will be uh, what I have again 89.24. So value of any point, what it comes out if you consider them, uh, the pressure intensity over here as 89.2. Okay. So how much it comes out? Uh, tell me what will be these two values. First one, 89.24. Is this uh, 44.62? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Plus the rest of the value. Uh, what about this one? 10.75. Five. Is that 10. correct? Five. 10 point yes, okay Five. yes sir. okay 10 point 6 we can take it so what it uh, results 44.62 plus 10 point 6 what it comes out 55.37 sir okay so this is 55.37 kilo newton meter here okay this is my unfactored moment so this is 55 so what will be the factored moment if I multiply 1.5 factor of safety? How much it comes here? The factored moment? 83.055. Okay, 83.055. So that value has changed. So you proceed with that value what we have calculated now. Now the factored moment is 83.0. Okay. 82.81. 82. Okay, 83.81. Uh, I'll take it round off to 83 kilonewton meter. Okay, I have to design it for this one, this bending moment. So, what about the this uh, shear force then? Okay, so how much will be the shear force in that case? So, shear force, what will happen? It will be the value of UDL. Okay, well, how much you said this corrected value was? 80 89 okay 89 so due to that 89 what is the uh, shear force that is coming over there 89.24 so in this also what we have here is this is 89.24 okay into 1 meter that length and this will be 89.24 okay so this shear force how much is that unfactored shear force and factored shear force 105.37 this is 105.37 kilo newtons okay if i factor this that is into 1.5 factor of safety so that will be how much 158.05 158.05 okay this is that is enough uh, zero five kilonewtons okay so we have this factored bending moment and shear force now now keep those values what we have calculated now okay keep them and proceed for the next calculation okay so what you have to do next next is uh, we have our uh, this uh, design of our uh, bending moment and calculation over here, right? So try calculating the area of steel required from the bending moment what you have calculated just now, okay? Now, what we'll do is we'll adopt a 10 mm diameter bar as our main reinforcement and uh, clear cover, yes? Uh, clear cover, minimum 60 mm, okay? This is a very less clear cover what I have chosen here. But since that base slab is entirely beneath the uh, ground level, it is constantly in contact with the soil or even with water. So a higher clear cover is required over there. Okay, 60 to 80 mm, you can choose the clear cover for this base slab. I have adopted a 60 mm clear cover. 
and what happens to the effective depth so overall depth what was adopted was 450 minus the effective cover that is 60 clear cover plus half the bar dia so this is a, the effective depth what we have here 380 mm is our effective depth and whatever the movement we have calculated for that try finding out the area of steel you also have sp16 okay so from that also you can obtain this uh, area of steel okay no problem if you even if you calculate what is your me by bd square okay and from that what is the percentage of steel okay and get the ast also that also will help you in finding ast that can also be done i would used this formula of ast at this point and determined what is the ast okay my mu was different okay uh, calculation it was uh, different so this is not the mu what you will be taking here wrong you take the mu value what we obtained just now on calculation and find what should be this area of steel tell me what area of steel is required for that someone was asking any doubt you can tell me sushma kocheri yes Calculate the ESP. Was that you? If you have any doubts, I heard someone asking some doubts. If you have, you can unmute and ask. Sir, 26.7 mm square. Okay. So what you get is 620. 6 mm square okay so this is the est what has to be provided minimum uh, for this uh, moment okay now from that what about the spacing of our uh, uh, bars so what we have here uh, if i use a uh, bars of uh, 10 mm as my main reinforcement so this is the spacing what i'm getting for my est what i had calculated just know what you said, 627 for that, what will be the EST? So spacing will be area of a single bar divided by total EST, what you are going to provide into 1000. We are calculating it for one meter width, so 1000 mm, okay? That will tell you what is the spacing of the bars. So how much you are going to get it in, our, in your case? Calculate that spacing. And also what I should ensure is when I calculate the EST from this formula, whatever I adopt, it should be more than minimum EST. So in case if you use HYST bars in the slabs, the minimum area of reinforcement is 0.12% of BD. Okay, so 0.12% of BD for our slab thickness, it is 456 mm square. So what we are getting here is more than this minimum EST. So fine. So for this, we can provide the steel. Okay, then the spacing calculation. So what spacing you get for this, if you use 10 mm bars? 126 mm, sir. Okay, so you are getting 126 mm. Okay, anyone else with that calculation? So what I can adopt is you can provide, when you get 126 mm, uh, just don't round it off to 125 or 120. You can take it still uh, further below, okay? I can use a spacing of 100 mm center to center, okay, for main reinforcement, okay. And what is the maximum spacing from IS456? It is three times the effective depth, 3D. So three into 380, it is 1140. So what we are going to provide here, it is more than, sorry, less than the maximum spacing, okay. So it is less than maximum spacing. So our spacing is fine. I can adopt a spacing of 100 mm center to center. And this becomes 100 now. Okay, we have to provide it at 100 mm center center. Another steel, what we require here is distribution steel or the secondary steel. So it will be 0.12% of BD. Okay, it will be 
the minimum steel what you have so 0.12 percent of bd which was 456 mm square okay so 456 mm square so find out what will be the spacing for secondary steel i'll be using 8 mm diameter bars I'll be using the 8 mm diameter bar. So for that 456 square mm square and 8 mm diameter bar, what spacing is required? So to start posting, yes, huh, 110. So let us use that also as 100 mm center to center. For your attendance, put your USN. I want you to put only the USN. I don't want anything other than USN, full USN in the chat box. Before you, uh, we end the class, put that US in. Okay, uh, so for secondary, 8 mm at 100 mm center to center. Okay, so that will be your distribution steel. Any other value, if you get, check it. Now, after that is we have to check it for shear. Okay, check that post law for resistance to shear. We have calculated the shear force. Okay, and the shear stress will be VU upon BD. So, V is equal to VU upon BD. That should be checked against the shear resistance of the section of the reinforced concrete section. Okay, we'll continue that. Uh, we'll stop uh, today's class over here. Check this AST and make sure you get the answer and uh, give your attendance in the chat box, your USN, full USN. After that, you can exit. Amok Pujari, Deepa Salamke, Pawan Mugi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Any extra class you want for the beyond this? 
No, sir. Nothing. Uh, then put your yes hand and exit. I am waiting for you to exit so that I can end the meeting. Shiv Prasad Santaki, Vinayak Nagoji, Yash Lad, Pawan Nuhi, Amok Pujari is not at all there. Thank you. 